What's up, my Effect House babies? People keep asking me about the changes that have happened with the animated texture sequences and the nodes that uh, work with them, because my other tutorial about flip card animations is pretty outdated. It's, it's about a year old now, and some things have changed in some of these recent versions. So I'm going to try to run through this. This is unscripted. I just want to show you some of the basic building blocks that are new and how they are different. I'm not, I, I'm not actually going to compare it to the old one. You'll just have to look at the old video for reference if you care. But I want to show you what it's like to set up a texture sequence and use the um, animation node in the latest versions of Effect House. So the first thing over here is, as always, we have to import a texture sequence. We've got this uh, Add Asset button over here. We go to Import Texture Sequence. We go pick our... Uh, our set of images. In this case, I have digits from 0 to 9. I'm just going to select all of those and hit open. And you can see the first thing that's different here is we have two objects now in the assets panel. One is the good old texture sequence, um, like the actual textures, right? Which you can see down here in the bottom right animating through. Up here, you can see the resolution. And this is just like any other texture in here, you can change the compression and you've got these advanced settings, although you'll see that the advanced settings are a little skimpier for a, a texture sequence. Um, but then the new thing here is that there's actually an animated texture object over here on the left. If I click this, you can see it's not quite the same thing. You can see that it has a texture here that has to refer to the actual underlying animated texture. Uh, which is sort of that set of image frames. But it also has a loop count here, and you can see that these are these are uh, accessible. There's getters and setters for these. But there's a, a loop count. Negative one means loop forever. Uh, zero would mean don't loop at all, don't animate at all. And uh, one or greater would mean animate through the sequence that many times. So by default, this is negative one, which means loop forever. Uh, by default, it's going in forward order. Uh, you can also reverse the order here, and you can change the FPS, but let's just leave this stuff all on the defaults for now. And so what, what you're going to end up with is you can use this texture sequence, this animated texture, in the places where you would have used a normal texture. Uh, and you don't have to use any animation component anymore. So you can see up here, let's go up here in the upper left and add an object to our hierarchy. I'm actually going to show another thing that's different. We used to go create planes and apply textures to them manually, but now there is actually a concept of a 3D image. I'm not sure how long this has been here. I missed it when it got added, but uh, FilterDank showed it to me recently and I was stunned because we already were familiar with 2D images and those usually needed a, a 2D orthographic camera. But now we have this 3D image here and it works similarly. And you can see over here on the right in the uh, inspector, for the texture, by default, it has this gray default texture, and it has a built-in image default material. That's fine. Uh, we'll just go click the texture and pick our animated texture here. And as soon as we pick that, we can see that it's, it's animating here right now. So that's nice. And this is where you can also see the results if, if you change this loop count, for instance. If we go make this zero, and then when it reloads, you'll see it's not animating anymore. It's just showing the first frame. But let's leave this, like I said before, let's leave this at negative one. And let's, um, let's look at this again here. We've got, uh, you know, again, we didn't have to add a component like we used to. So there's no component that we need to connect to to manipulate this. So in here, in the uh, visual scripting graph down at the bottom, I'm going to right click, or I'm going I'm to two finger click on my trackpad, add node. And I'm going to search for animation, animated. And you can see that there's an animated texture info and there's an animated texture player. And let's, let's get the animated texture player. This is the replacement for that old node that controlled those animated sequence components. And you can see it's pretty similar. It's got this um, input to, to, start, uh, to start an animation from two. And you can see down here are the fields for the from and to. And you can see here that you can plug in an animated texture, but actually it's more convenient. We can just come in here and tap this 
and scroll down and actually select that animated texture. And we don't have to plug anything in there. It's, it's hard coded right there. And if we were to run this, uh, it would, you know, it would animate from zero to zero, which is just single frame and zero. So actually let's come in here and let, let's add a screen tap. Sorry, my cat is jingling around in the background. If, if you hear a weird jingling, that is one of my cats going underfoot, but we're going to drag this to here. Okay, so now when we tap the screen, if I come over here, I'm going to tap, and you can see it animated it from frame zero to frame zero, and so it's just showing the zero. If we change this to like from three to three, and it reloaded, and now it's it's doing the default loop again, and if I tap it, it stops on the three. And you can have it, you know, you can actually have it animate multiple frames, like say we wanted it to go three to four. All right, we've reloaded the um, the effect again over here, and now I'm going to tap it. Oh, it reloaded again. Sometimes Effect House has a couple of reloads to do, but tap it. And now you can see it's flipping between three and four rapidly because it's still got that negative one, right? It's still going to loop infinitely, but right now it's looping from three to four. If you wanted it to do something else, you could, of course, set this loop count to a different number and you could even do that programmatically right you could come in here and say actually i want to set that loop count to one and just play three and four real quick one time let's not worry about that so over here again we just like in our old tutorial we can come in here and actually get a random number um let's say that we want just a random number from zero to nine we're going to go from a min of zero to a max of 9.999. Now, why do I why do I do 9.999 instead of 10? This is a, one of these weird edge case tips that I'll give you. But through experimentation, we found that if you if you do this from zero to 10, uh, it seems actually the last time that we tested, it seems that the 10 is potentially included in there and since our animation only has nine frames we're going to say we want from zero to nine 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 and we're going to truncate that to um sorry it's called floor in here math floor we're going to truncate that into an integer and now you you could say oh well i should just be able to drag this to the from and the two but what you can see here in fact you can see it if i zoom in there these two numbers are different they're not matching up because this on every single read of this value it's getting a different value there so this would give us an unexpected result if i were to tap this now you'll see now it's it's animating through some section of the numbers rather than stopping on one so what we actually really want to do is make it when we tap assign this into a temporary variable so again this changed uh, the layout of this changed so we're going to go to this little hamburger menu my items and we're going to create a new variable here and we'll call it random index and you can see this info panel here on the right the details is where you can say what type it is but by default it's going to be number which is exactly what we want and so we can click this little button on the left here to um, set and we'll just come right in here and instead of having the screen tap go to the animation we'll have it go here and we'll drag this here and that's going to when we tap it's going to set a single value in there that's not changing and then we will send that over to the animated texture player but we're going to instead of pulling these values from here you can hold shift and drag to slice those wires away that's another new feature and instead let's drag these values from the random index that we set and now you'll see every time I tap the screen, it's going to randomly pick a number from zero to 9.999, chop off the decimal portion of that. So it'll end up with the number, uh, a whole number zero to nine, and it'll set that as the from and to frame on here and animate it. So this is, this is actually animating forever, one frame over and over again. So it doesn't have any real like animation effect, but Again, if I tap this again, it's going to pick another number. It picked two and it drew it. And again and again. All right, now what if you want more than one of these? 
Well, first let's go up here and select the image in the upper left, and we're going to Command D uh, to duplicate that. And let's just move the position of it a little bit over. We'll just drag this X value so it's right next to it. You can see it's overlapping it a little bit there. I think if we actually, if we change this advanced setting on the texture to pre-malt, it might blend those a little bit. Oh no, it blends them even worse. It looks like a, like a vinyl sticker on there. So sometimes playing with pre-malt gives slightly different results depending on what you're doing. Uh, in this case, I think would look better without it. Now, what you're going to see here that it, that is a little bit different than the way that it used to work. Remember before, for each one of these that we had, we would have a component on that object with its own animated sequence controller, basically, its own animated sequence component that we could control individually. But right now, what we have is both of these images, image and image one, have the same exact animated texture here, which means that if I tap the screen, it's stopping for both of them. But what if we wanted to have two different numbers there? Well, what we have to do now, and this is a little bit different and a little bit odd, uh, is because this, you can think of that logic of what number is showing or what frame is showing as living in this animated texture over here. If you wanna have two different ones, you're going to need two of those. So let's go over here and Command D to get a second one of these. We'll leave all the same settings again. And then we'll go to our image one and change the texture there to our new copy. And now when I click this, it's only gonna stop the first one because we haven't wired up any logic for the second one. All right, let's go from here. Okay. Uh, let's set it twice. All right, so basically, we'll, we'll come in here and a screen tap will set the random index and animate it as, and then it'll set it again. So we'll just, uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to create a sequence here. So we'll do this in two steps. We'll do add sequence. We'll make the tap start the sequence. And the first step of the sequence will be to do what we were already doing. And the second step of the sequence will be to come down here and do the exact same thing again. And what I'm going to do is just drag this same output down here to this. This We're setting the same variable because we're just using it as a temporary value just to store it and use it. And then we're coming down and we're going to store it again and use it again. And so I'm going to Command D to duplicate this node as well. And I'm going to make this step Go and animate that, and I'm going to drag these values just like we did before. And the only other thing we need to change, oops, I hit the wrong input there. The only other thing we need to change here is click this and pick the other sequence. And now you can see here the way that this goes. Let me hide this panel so there's more visibility here. I zoom in here. When we tap, that's going to go to here. That's going to run the sequence. It'll run this first step, which is going to come here, set random index to a random number zero through nine, and then animate texture, the first one of these digits to that number. And that'll, that'll fix the first digit there. And then the second step of the sequence, it'll come down here and again, set this temporary variable to a number zero to nine, and then feed that in for the second animated texture which will be the second digit. And that'll all happen in the blink of an eye. So as soon as I click here, we got two different random numbers there, three and five. If I do it again, 18, 24, etc. Now, you may wonder, this is going to be the second hot take I'm going to give you here. You may wonder why, why did we need to use the sequence? Why don't we just come off of one of these on this animated texture player here and go down to the next step? And the answer to that is, I don't use these. I don't use these. And I don't encourage any beginners to use these because these are very unintuitive. So you can see here, and in fact, there's always on every node, there's this little eye for information in the upper right. It's a little eye in a circle. It's hard to even see what it is. If you tap this, it will tell you what all of these things do. And what you're going to see is that these descriptions 
are okay, but sometimes they're misleading. So you can see here, node outputs on begin, execute the next node when plays the first frame for the first time. So you would think perhaps when we run this here, this play from and to, you would think that that's going to trigger the on begin at the same time that we trigger this, right? As soon as it plays the first frame of the animation, it runs the on begin. And that is true. That's true. We can actually see that. Watch this. This is a little trick that I use sometimes if I'm just trying to watch the flow of things. Let's drag from that on begin to here. Now, you'll see if I go over here to this screen and I tap, watch this white dot on the if. Whenever you see one of these white dots turn blue, that means that the execution has hit that node. So watch here. When I click over here, we saw that blue dot flashed. I'll do it again. Blue, blue, blue. But one thing you might not have noticed, and you'll see it here, watch what happens when I restart the whole effect. There's this little restart curly cue up here. When I restart the effect, watch that white dot again. It flashed blue. The reason for that is because when the texture starts playing at the beginning of your effect, because of this loop count negative one, it's set to automatically play the texture as soon as the effect starts. And that actually triggers this output. And you can't really make it not do that, right? You, you could by setting this loop count to zero and having it not play. So let's, let's set that loop count to zero. When you set a loop count to zero, again, it's just, it just shows the first frame of the sequence. And now when we restart this effect, you'll see that the, the white dot is not blinking blue. I'm going to restart a couple more times just to be sure. It's not blinking blue. But now when I tap the screen, it doesn't update the number either. Because that animation is set to not play any loops. And so what this means is if you take this approach, you have to also take a step to set that loop count uh, as, you, as you set the frame. And I just find it easier to leave these at a negative one and just not show them in the screen until after I've animated them, right? So it depends on your use case. Sometimes you're going to need it to be visible on like an initial frame or something like that with a loop count zero and then go change it at, as you start or as you click. There's a lot of different things. But the main point of that whole discussion was to say, I don't trust these outputs because they can behave in very confusing and misleading ways. And in fact, what you, what you end up with is, for instance, if I had this drag down to here instead of the sequence coming down here, you can see what ended up happening is right at the beginning of the effect, this second one animated and, and already froze. And if you have a longer chain of these, imagine that we had a third one of these down here and that these were all chained. Then at the beginning of your effect, this first one is going to trigger there from the autoplay and the second one's going to trigger there from the autoplay. And then when the first auto trigger hits here and runs this again, then that one is going to trigger down here again. So you're going to get three unexpected triggers. And that can wreak havoc if you have these going off and in like playing sound effects or like causing other things to happen. So instead of dealing with any of that, I, I just avoid those. And it's so easy to just use a sequence to explicitly do what you want every time which is what I choose to do here. And again, I'll just show that one more time. Now it just works like a charm. Every time I click, it is giving me another two digit number. So that's animated textures in Effect House 3. That's uh, how I do it. You can take those lessons and apply them to the old tutorial, uh, sort of mentally patched together how it should work. Uh, maybe when I have more time, I'll do a more complex tutorial that shows how to actually do the flip card animations and whatnot. But for now, this, this should be helpful with the basics of the new animated texture system and a couple of little tidbits that you may run into or, or sources of potential confusion. Hope it helps. Have a good one.